My name is Daniel, I'm an architectural assistant at Matt Architecture based in central London and we use 3D printing here in a whole range of applications to translate our ideas into built form. Matt's quite a young company. We do a whole range of work from bespoke residential work to commercial developments. We're quite a fun company and we just enjoying the process of designing and delivering buildings at the moment. So part of our kind of mission statement or our kind of company ethos is to unlock the potential of difficult sites through fun and inclusive architecture. In the past, in my old job, we would have made models by hand and just cutting the paper, cutting card. Like it's great for, for capturing ideas, but when it comes to developing complex shapes, complex geometry, it's really labor intensive. So for something like this, for example, we would have cut out all the floor plates, all the facades. We would have had to work out all the geometries and fold the card. And even then it wouldn't have been very sturdy. So we were kind of limited in a way. By the time I come to Matt in 2013, Desktop 3D printing was already starting to become kind of available and Matt actually funded a Kickstarter 3D printer that we were trying to use in the office. So that's how we started to use it here. I'm working on a project called Ilona Rose House and it's a large mixed-use development in central London. And there's a model that we worked with through the planning process to show the building in its context. And that's actually a traditional architectural model, quite expensive, takes a long time to produce. And we found we needed to reiterate the design quite a lot of times. So the 3D printer was super useful for just being able to produce cheap, but really quite beautiful massing proposals to show the planners and engage them in the planning process. And we just print it in a filament which has wood embedded in it so we can achieve a really similar look. The, the real advantage of Ultimaker, I suppose for us, has been the speed it can print at, but also the reliability. And this is one where we've 3D printed at one-to-one -one the pattern that we want to have on the building's facade. So the green and the yellow are 3D printed pieces and the whites are cast from this central green piece. And this lets us then cast a mold, it's like a flexible silicon mold, we can, we can cast that, and then produce like a tile which is really useful to talk to manufacturers about the finish we're trying to achieve, but also to show the client the vision we have for the build. We've designed all the facade pieces. We're gonna then take a mold of and then cast. But this is another example of how we just, we integrate 3D printing with traditional techniques. So here we are at the site of the Alona Rose House project. These three buildings on the corner here, going all the way back to that road, are all to be demolished to make way for the project we're designing on the moment. That model of the corner that you're just seeing is actually this corner here, which marks the entrance into Soho. So it's really important for the project, really important for us. And this facade pattern we've been working on will be applied to the building all along here and on that street there. I mean, we find that when we make models, like it really engages the client. So a lot of what we do um, is quite technical, is quite like producing technical drawings. And you show someone a technical drawing and they just don't kind of engage with that, right? But like, you show someone a model and suddenly they can pick it up, they can, they can look around it, and I think it's a way we engage people with the ideas we're trying to pursue. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Thank you.